Uh, we pick up sort of uh, shortly after where we left off before. Um, Guy is sort of a part of the family, and and uh, uh, or at least trying to fit in with this family. And they they come across another family that is slightly more modernized. You know, another family that has a, has fi have figured out uh, a lot of the things that you know Guy is obsessed with. Um, and they're called the Bettermans, and the Bettermans are sort of take the Crudes on a journey that the, they certainly weren't expecting, and a journey that. Uh, uh, exposes them to a whole new world. Literally. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not playing like a, you know, a, 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 a pianist or something, the classical pianist or something. I mean, it's a very simple, fun, you know, I, it's a pleasure to do because it's just like, uh, for me, it's, you know, you hop into a recording booth and you just let your imagination run wild. And, you know, A, you throw everything up against the wall. They pick out the best bits and then animate them and create a whole world around it. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm consistently fascinated and and blown away by the ingenuity and genius of these animators and, you know, how they take really rough concepts just that are just transmitted to them by a dialogue and create whole scenescapes and worlds around that um, and visual comedy and all these sorts of things that are uh, really hard to do hard to do in live action, let alone in, in animation. So it's uh, it's always pretty wild to see that process. Um, I don't know. I haven't yet seen the final film. So um, I don't know. I know that Joel had mentioned, the director had mentioned that a lot of the, the stuff I wrote just on, on the day got it, made it into the movie. So uh, I'll be anxious and excited to see what that stuff is and how it looks. Joel's perfect for this. I mean, you know, I, I don't think uh, uh, directing an animated movie is is that far off of directing a live action film. So, you know, Joel is on character, he's on story, he's on point. He's always looking for the emotion underneath the humor, and that's. I don't think that you can successfully have one without the other. You have to balance the comedy with the heart and emotion. So he's he's great at all that stuff, and he's like a heat seeking missile for you know, ideas and threads that are really gonna work, um, work well, uh, not just for my character, but for the whole movie. So loved, I love to work with Joel. I would be very, very cautious about those bananas. Those bananas may end up uh, getting your, your butt beat. Yeah. Uh, I believe the punch monkey language of memory serves is the, the punch monkeys communicate via physical violence. I mean, they communicate through punching. Uh, which is really just a terrible way to have a conversation. It's a conversation that you want to keep as brief as humanly possible. Uh, so yes, Guy is is tasked with interpreting this language uh, uh, for the punch monkey. So he gets his uh, he gets walloped uh, quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's a credit to Joel. You know, he really takes a, an expectation, comes ninety degrees to it, and gives the audience a totally fresh perspective. I think that that's that's so important. It's also very you know to me is very modern. You know, it's a, it's a modern take on it. You know, anytime you can sidestep a cliche or a stereotype is a good thing. Yeah, I, I again, I still haven't seen the final uh, product, but I, the, the recording that stuff was really fun. I mean, it's super energetic. It's wild how, you know, a simple two hour recording session can feel a bit like a marathon. At the, you know, that, that's why they make them sort of frequent and brief uh, uh all at once because you can't re your voice goes after a couple of hours I mean, it's uh uh so it's super energetic super fun i i love uh, all the sequences but that that sequence in particular toward the third act of the movie is like a high octane it was just a fastball of joy and i think that's something that is uh uh, uh very exciting particularly in the year 2020 <laughs> It's a, it's both. I mean, you know, they're filming you for a very good reason. They're filming you because they're capturing your physicality. So um, it's always, you know, wild to see that go up on the screen to see an animated character who you don't necessarily look anything like, but that that character has your mannerisms, has your facial expressions. You know, of course it has the voice, but you don't expect that other half. So um, I love that. And I love that anything goes. I love that you can sit in that booth and talk to Joel and say, Hey, like what, you know, maybe, Maybe when I fall off the cliff, this and this and this happens. 
um, as a result. And, you know, he may have an idea that, 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 that betters that, or he may say, no, no let's, let's, that's exactly what we're going to do. And then they animate to that. It's a, it's a really, it's a, it's a real, um, you know, it's a, such a stage for imagination, unlike even a, 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 a live action movie, because anything is possible in animation. So really great. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, I, I, you leave it, you leave it to, to Joel to sort of steer the ship and tell you at any given moment what's happening, you know, with, with the other characters. But uh, you also get a pretty good idea because there's a lot of storyboards, you know, there's a lot of rough sketches, what could or could not happen. You know, you pivot in the middle of a recording session. Sometimes you come up with an idea and then they follow that string and we'll create a whole new sequence. So, um, but I love Belt. Belt's a lot of fun. I've seen a lot of kids out there with Belt toys and that kind of stuff. So, you know, something's working. You know, I just hope that they, you know, they, what they take away from the film, I hope they just enjoy it. I think it's like a year where you want to have some joy, you know, more than anything. It's, it's, it's nice to see something that doesn't really uh, express any sort of high level of cynicism or anything like that. There's just, when you see a movie like this, it's just about joy. It's just about the experience of togetherness. It's about uh, family. It's about values that matter. And I, I, you know, I think that that's pretty damn great, you know, especially after, this somewhat torturous uh, uh, year we're in. And I play Eep. She is a member of the Crudes family. And um, she is a, a cave girl. She is incredibly enthusiastic, very ferocious, a, a true warrior. And in place of a pinky toe, she has a peanut because she's seen some things. That's it. I mean, I think it's so special for girls and for boys alike to see to see uh, these amazing Thunder Sisters saving the day. It's also, you know, just kind of the, the bonding between these women is so special and that they realize that together they create this really powerful unit. Um, I love that. I think it's very much like life. It's very realistic. So it's always great when that's in, in movies too. I mean, um, you know, I, I don't know how realistic the animals and the, and the cave people and saving the betterments is um, <laughs> in that sense. But, you know, women band together and they can do anything. That's realistic. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, it, it was it was surprisingly easy to come back into. And it's nice because, you know, it, it was over a period of 10 years. I've aged a decade. It feels like Eve has only aged like a year or so. So it's pretty great because you can just you can just pick up right where you left off. Um, but it's been a blast to be to be recording on these on these two movies for so long because it really is the longest project I've ever been a part of, animated or or otherwise. So it's yeah, it was very special and and um, it's always a fun a fun day at work when I get to go be. Joel, Joel is really wonderful. He's a great director and a great animated director too. He was very, he was very, um, you know, supportive and you don't feel embarrassed going 30 levels over the top with him because he laughs and he thinks it's so fun. And uh, he's just great at gauging the process because you don't know necessarily over the years that you're doing it, you don't know where they've moved those sequences to or like, you know, him explaining like, right now you're on a vine, you're yelling at him, he's 10 feet away, but maybe you'll be closer ultimately when we animate it. So we're gonna try it both ways, you know? You're really having to kind of like do it into a, a vacuum in a way. And he's so great at making you feel like you understand everything that's happening on screen when you can't see it or you're not with the other actors. Um, yeah, he was he was wonderful. Uh, so Hope Betterman is, um, well, first of all, I watched the Croods when when my kids were little all the time, and I um, like all the time. And so when they asked me to join the cast, I was so excited because it's uh, been like a staple in our household for years and years. So um, I was so excited to join. And um, and uh, uh, Hope Betterman is. Um, She's a little tightly wound and she is matriarch of the Bettermans and she prides herself on knowing everything, including what's best for her daughter, Dawn. Um, uh, Hope's journey into the wild with the Krugs um, 
uh, uh, is shows that she's you know kind of built walls around um, to like protect her family from the outside world, but then she realizes that those walls are kind of creating distance between within her family. And so that's what she learns from the crews. She learns how to, you know, knock down on those walls and, and, you know, it allows the family to be closer. Um, uh, she kind of sees the crudes as cave people initially um, and simple, um, but then um, she, through, you know, getting to know them and also having no other choice, she is able to embrace her uh, more primal side and, and create, you know, like tighter bonds with her family and the crews. I mean, having daughters and, and, and then, you know, I'll just keep it at that. Having daughters and watching this movie, I cried at the end. I love the fact that all the women come together and, you know, my, my daughters loved that idea too. Like it's such a, um, uh, it's such a nice, nice way. It was such a nice way to end, end the movie. Um, but uh, yeah, so I love the, the female empowerment part of, of it. And you know, they're being challenged. Are they able to keep the family together? Um, you know, when they're tempted by, you know, these people who seem to have a much better situation than them. And is it actually better on the, on the other side? Or, you know, is it uh, the grass is always greener situation? And I think we learn that it's a the grass is always greener <laughs> situation. And, you know, that nothing is more important than family and nothing is more important than, you know, loving your family and sticking together. And I think that's, that's what they learn in this movie. You know, what's so funny is I was trying to remember when we started this and I think it was about five years ago. Is that, is that right? I, I don't know who would know the answer to that, but it was so long ago. And I honestly, I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's like, you're, you're kind of, um, I love doing animated movies and I love working uh, with super creative uh, directors of animated movies and this was one of those situations where we just kind of found the tone of it. You know, I think it's, it is what it is in the character, but, but we, we found all of the little nuances and we found all of the, you know, the energy and the tone and the, and you just, you find that by doing it, you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And, um, and trying different things. And, and by the end, you kind of come up with like the coolest version is usually how it works. Unless you're not lucky, it doesn't come out good. But in this case, it did. <laughs> <laughs> um, did but you... Joel, Joel Crawford <laughs> is the coolest guy ever. And he's so much fun. And his energy is like contagious. He's like, has the sweetest, most creative. He's like a, like a little like a like like a like a child, which is the most fun person ever to work with. And so we just had a blast. Like I would look forward to going to work, and look forward to being with him, and just had the best time ever. Like he's great. Yeah, I did. I did improvise a little bit. Um, uh, yes. And that's always super fun. And, and, but it like we we took a lot of time finding the character and then it becomes once once you know the character, you can kind of just riff and have fun and you know do whatever. but but they also have, you know, it's written really well. but we did we did have improvise a little bit, yeah. No, sadly, sadly, no. I, that would have been so much 
much fun to work with Peter Dinklage. Um, uh, but no, I didn't, just Joel. And, but that was good enough. Like that was really fun. But, but yeah, I, I usually, I don't, I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever been, oh, maybe I did once with um, Jeff Garland for, I'm not sure, I can't even remember what it was, but um, that was fun. It is fun to get the actors in there together. They should do that more uh, often. Hi, I'm Kelly Marie Tran and I play Dawn Betterman and she is such a fun character who has lived in a very protected environment. Her parents are super overprotective and then she gets to meet Eve and she sort of is introduced into this whole new world and learns about scars and having adventures and just goes into the world with this beautiful childlike wonder. Um, yeah, I'm excited for everyone to see more Dawn. I think it, what's really cool about that depiction of female friendship is that we, we have sort of this expectation of what we've seen historically in films and in books and in shows where female characters have been sort of pitted against each other. And the power that I feel just watching this friendship blossom and recognizing how so many female friendships in my life are reminiscent of even Dawn, of this sort of like they're not competing against each other. They are supporting each other and giving each other space to sort of be themselves and learn new things from each other. And yeah, it's pretty amazing. I love those chicken seals. They scream and they're hilarious. <laughs> it's like, ah, I don't know, I can't even do it. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> the Please do it, Kelly, do it. Come on. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Um, but yeah, they're so much fun. And the wolf spiders are like cute, but also like really creepy in a way. I, it's really cool to see. Um, I remember when I was recording, I, I walked up to um, the animation space and, and saw all of the different characters that they were sort of pitching for these animals. They had a bunch of different things. I don't think they used everything, but they used a lot of them. And it was cool to see sort of all of the creative minds that came in between. Uh, that came together to sort of like mush these creatures together and then to see what they chose was pretty cool. Joel rules. Yeah. <laughs> he rules. <laughs> I mean, I think that um, animation is so interesting to me because there's, I feel like there's so much room to sort of play and to just like get weird. <laughs> and Joel was always so open and receptive to sort of improv or to different like I, I know I did some weird stuff in there but I never felt judged and I think that's very special because Joel's just a nice all-around great dude <laughs> um no but I, I, there's so many good messages in this movie I think I, just the depiction of female friendship and just women teaming up and saving the day at the end of the day you know like they, they saved the day they saved I don't want to say world did they say the world they saved their clans there we go let's not over exaggerate and <laughs> but yeah I mean I think that those messages are really really powerful Funk um you know is still as kind of innocent and naive uh as ever which is where most of his comedy comes from but Funk becomes you know, like a lot of kids um, and a lot of parents have to deal with the kids, it seems like Thunk becomes obsessed with uh, what's basically television. He calls it window. Um, and it's sort of a stand in for television or like an iPad or an iPhone where he's just constantly viewing the world through the screen that he's created. Um, so that's sort of that's sort of his his big challenge for the movie is to like pay attention to the real world and not just be looking at this tablet all the time. Yeah, um, you know, the, honestly, the, the process for the second one and the, the amount of time that elapsed in between, it, it, it wasn't really that noticeable to me because um, all animation takes a really long time. You know, it's just a slow process. So um, it kind of doesn't feel like, it, it doesn't feel like I ever really stopped working on it uh, to some degree between the first film and the second film. So it, it was pretty easy to get back into the, the character pretty quickly. Um, He's, it's, it's, he's a fun guy to inhabit too, uh, just because there's sort of like the, the guiding principle of, you know, any question you have, like, is, does this sound too smart? Would he know what this word is? Would he know what this is? The answer is usually no. Just assume that he does not know any, like anything, any answer to any question. Yeah, J Joel did a great job um, 
directing the actors and, and directing the, the finished film, which I think visually is um, really beautiful and um, kind of a fun departure from the first film and in a lot of ways. Um, but as far as, you know, working with the actors, you, you spend, yeah, the, the reality of, of animation is you're, you're, it's really just you and the director in a booth for the most part. Um, you rarely, if ever, see the other cast members. So, you know, he's, he, he Joel, the director, um, is really just in charge of like making sure that the tone of the movie is consistent, you know, and everybody's like making the same movie and not, you know, eight different movies, which seems like it could be an easy thing to have happen. Um, but he, he did a great job and, you know, was really encouraging of, um, you know, making it your own and not being afraid to improv and go off book and, you know, kind of allow things to happen and then we can kind of react to them and, you know, add stuff here and there off of it. Um, so yeah, it was great. It was, it was really great to work with. Um, I mean, I think the biggest thing that I improved uh, that's like carried over into both films was um, naming my dog Douglas. Um, that was just like, my agent at the time was named Douglas. And I just kind of did that as a, a, it's a joke for like two people on earth. And, uh, and then he ended up, you know, the dog ends up becoming like this pretty big character in both films. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think, you know, the, the theme of the first movie was much more about like the nuclear family unit and kind of just survival. Um, and this one opens it up a little bit by adding the, you know, the new family that the crews have to interact with. And it's it's got a, you know, a great like major theme to it, which is, you know, you have to work together. You have to work with your neighbors. You have to, even if like your neighbors are very different than you, you know, you've got to overcome those differences. Um, and learn how to work together for the greater good without giving uh, any plot away. But, you know, uh, when a big external force comes in that's a threat to everybody, you know, you've got to work together. So I think, especially right now, that's a really, really, um, like, pertinent theme. Um, yes, I mean, Thunk's, you know, kind of through line in the movie is he's got to, like, learn to like live in the real world and not just look at a screen and I think that's super relatable right now because after the last few months I find myself like my eye is physically tired and my brain mentally tired from looking at screens all the time um I you know that's the thing I miss the most I think this year is like going to theaters um because even, I mean even though it's a screen like there's something about projection that's different than looking at you know, you, well, I mean, they've literally done studies that like your brain reacts differently to looking at a light source like a screen or television versus looking at a projected image with the, the flickering too. Uh, like you get in a theater, it's kind of hypnotic. Um, yeah, I do too. I mean, I, I'm excited for people to see it, um, you know, however they can, however they, you know, are able to see it or, or safely able to see it. Um, just because you work on these for so long that it's, it's exciting because, uh, you know, just even your friends and family, like they know you've been working on this for years and years. So it's it's fun just to to finally have the catharsis of like, look, I didn't make it all up, here it is. Yeah, I mean, my, my biggest hope is just that if we can give people a couple hours um, of escapism and, and laughs, uh, it's, it's been a tough year for everybody. So if, if we can help uh, the whole family out, which, you know, I think it's it's a rare movie that is really, really genuinely funny for adults and kids. So uh, if, if we can just help somebody distract their their family for a couple hours that they've been trapped with all year, uh, I'll, I'll feel pretty good about that. I do have a favorite, but for spoiler's sake, I don't want to say what it is. So I'll just say you'll have to watch the film uh, to see like, you know, specifically like the back half of the movie, what my, my favorite uh, new creature is. Yeah, it was a lot of yelling. A lot of having to yell that uh, that phrase over and over, Thunder Sisters. So my my, my biggest memory from uh, that sequence in the film is being forced. Futureprevews.com. Whoa! Go behind the scenes of movies. Subscribe to Future Flicks YouTube channel.